Welcome back to PsyQ. And this week, we're talking about a problem more serious than running out of beer. We're running out of water. Now, I'm from a place that's literally surrounded by water, so I didn't think it was even possible for an Asian to actually run out until my mates back home in Australia sent me this. This is the reality of what's happening right across rural and remote Australia. Now, for Scott, he's already lost 16 head of cattle since February. And if it doesn't rain soon, he's at risk of losing his entire herd. Turns out humans aren't the only ones who need water to survive, right? Your food needs water and your food's food needs water and the farmer that makes your food's food needs water. Who would have thunk it? But according to the UN, demand for fresh water is going to outstrip supply by 40% in the next 20 years. So to put that another way, by 2040, we're not going to have enough fresh water for everyone. There's going to be massive water shortages everywhere. Right now, we're already facing shortages in Los Angeles, San Francisco, El Paso, Denver, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Atlanta, and Salt Lake City. That's right, a city that literally has the word lake in its title is going to run out of water. Now, if you live in one of those places, don't expect to for much longer because right now, water is starting to look a bit like common sense in the White House. It's a bit bloody scarce. Leaving so many US cities vulnerable is unpleasant for the people that live there, but it's worse than that. It's a massive national security weakness. And yet our nation keeps using water in wildly ineffective ways. We lose it to leaky pipes that aren't maintained. We allow developers to dump waste into it. We try and grow some of our most water-intensive crops in the desert. So let's talk about this problem. How have we managed to build a nation where we don't have enough water? How have we managed to run out? And now that we've gone and buggered everything up, what are we going to do to fix it? So beyond the ability to, you know, keep us alive, fresh water also is used in basically everything that we do in America. We use it for farming, mining, manufacturing. We use it for spit takes. We dunk John Cena into it in Parks and Rec. We use it to kill aliens in M. Night Shyamalan films. We use it for all the things. So it's no wonder that some people are now calling water blue oil, which is just dumb because it's clearly wet gold. And when a city runs out of water, I mean, really runs out of it, shit gets real very quickly. Let's have a look at Cape Town, South Africa. This is what a water-stressed city looks like. Now, they've been staring down the barrel of day zero, the dry judgment day, when they actually run out of fresh water. Now, in South Africa, showers are capped at 90 seconds and if it's yellow, let it mellow policy was introduced and households were restricted to using just 13 gallons of water per day. Now, to put this into perspective, the average American uses over 100 gallons a day. And to put this into even more perspective, 100 gallons is a whole lot more than 13 gallons. We did the math. Now, imagine having to cut out nearly 90% of your water use whilst your Danny has stinky pee mallowing in it all summer. Welcome to the future, America. Back to Cape Town. Collecting water from a local natural spring became the new morning ritual in a developed and relatively wealthy first world country. Thanks to a lot of hard work, Cape Town has managed to push back day zero into next year, but they're still heavily restricting water use. So what happens to Cape Town when God doesn't bless the rain down in Africa? Good question. Disaster theory states that if an essential service is cut off or restricted, law and order begins to break down after about 72 hours. Now, we've had a real-life example of that as well. Take a look back at Sao Paulo, Brazil. In 2015, they had just 20 days of water left. That's for a city bigger than New York about to have their own day zero, no water. They had to rename their landmark Christ the Redeemer of Ration Vouchers. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, well, duh, just like uh, bring in bottled water, we thought that too. But it turns out it's mathematically impossible to do that for a city of over 20 million people. Just to get enough water into the city to keep the population alive would require 50,000 water trucks trucking in water from miles away at a huge cost. 
Now, when Sobolo tried to bring in a few water trucks, the trucks were attacked by desperate civilians who were just trying to get enough water to survive. Heavy police guard had to be brought in to surround those trucks to try and maintain some semblance of law and order. So next time you watch a movie where city people frolic under an open fire hydrant, just know that the next scene is them killing each other for a drop of air conditioning condensation. Now, if you're thinking all of this sounds like the start of every apocalypse movie, congratulations, you're not wrong. Brazil doesn't even have open carry. Can you imagine how quickly shit would get real if they ran out of water in Florida? Well, you can start imagining that right now because Florida is the state that's most vul vulnerable to water shortages. Their water is a bit like their government. It's Republican controlled, it's poorly managed, and it's a little bit depressing to think about. Now, remember when I mentioned that the average American uses 100 gallons of water a day? Your average Floridian uses 158 gallons. It must be all those old folks with their aqua aerobics. Most people in Southern Florida get that fresh water from a thing called the Biscayne Aquifer. It's a big pit of porous limestone, like a big underground sponge. But like the rest of Florida, it's located right next to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, as the fresh water gets sucked out by all those retirees on Palm Beach, and as uh, ocean levels rise, thanks to climate change, that salty ocean water is slowly leaching into the fresh water of the Biscayne Aquifer, making the water undrinkable. A bunch of wells have already had to be closed because of salt water contamination. So the question hanging over Florida now is, how long can they keep their fresh water safe? How long until it's just the salty room of Margaritaville left? It's obvious that we need to start managing our water better. We should be looking at water security the same way we look at national security. But the problem is that national security is run by our nation, whereas water security is run by our states. So water sources that cross state lines can cause huge disagreements. Folks upstream gets what's, get first dibs on the water, while everyone else downstream gets, pardon the pun, the trickle-down effect. Kansas and Colorado have been locked in a lawsuit for 24 years over water rights, which is longer than Harry Styles has been alive. And that problem is only going to get worse as water becomes more valuable. In many states, water management decisions aren't based on good science. Decisions are based on who has made the largest campaign contributions. And as long as we're just making up our own science and making up our own facts, our nation is at a catastrophic risk. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.